Hello everyone, this is Dr. O, and here we are moving into the maxillary artery. And specifically, we're going to talk about the three divisions of it and branches of the first two divisions. So let's take a look at this image. We see that the external carotid artery is heading up here in the neck, deep in the parotid gland, where it then bifurcates into its two terminal branches. One cut here is the superficial temporal artery, and then the other is the maxillary artery. So the maxillary artery has quite a few branches, um, so we break it down into three specific parts. The first part, or the mandibular part, passes behind or deep to the neck of the mandible, which is lateral to the lateral pterygoid muscle, which is our boundary between the three parts. The next part is the second or the pterygoid part. We find that this is either superficial or deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle. In a lot of our illustrations, we're seeing it superficial, but it's almost half and half where we see it going superficial or deep. Then as we go medial or anterior to the lateral pterygoid muscle, we get to the third part or the pterygopalatine part. And its branches for the most part will be within the pterygopalatine fossa. One thing about the three parts that is distinctive is that the first and the third parts, all of the branches traverse foramina, whereas the second part, none of them do. So we'll talk through which foramina those are as well. We can start this by outlining the lateral pterygoid muscle here. The first part being lateral to lateral pterygoid muscle. The second part being again here, superficial, but it can also be deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle. And then the third part over here is where it's entering into the pterygopalatine fossa. So we'll see these branches coming off and this whole portion right here is still that second part. It really only becomes that third part as it's coursing through the pterygomaxillary fissure where it gives off those branches. So let's take it part by part and talk about the branches. Again, we're only going to stick to the first and the second parts here. The third part you'll do in the future when, we, when you learn about the pterygopalatine fossa with Dr. B. So with the first part, we can see this is just branching off the external carotid artery before this lateral pterygoid muscle. The first branch we see right here is the deep auricular artery. This will actually pierce through the external acoustic meatus and supply the area. The second is typically the anterior tympanic artery. It will pass similarly near the area of the ear and it will enter into the middle ear through the petrotympanic fissure, which is found just on that posterior edge of the mandibular fossa on the temporal bone. Next, we see our middle meningeal artery. So this one will go superiorly in through foramen spinosum to supply the area. We'll also remember that the auriculotemporal nerve will encircle it. So we'll see it kind of passing around that away. And that is sort of that relationship we see there. You may see an accessory meningeal artery, which will course into the cranial cavity through the foramen ovale. The last branch is the inferior alveolar artery. We see this one is the only one kind of coursing inferiorly toward that mandibular foramen to enter into the mandible. So this will give off a branch, this small branch here, to the mylohyoid muscle, um, and then enters into the mandibular foramen where it'll supply the mandibular teeth, and then the chin and the lower lip as it becomes mental artery. Our first two here are the deep auricular and anterior tympanic. Deep auricular tends to be posterior to that external acoustic meatus, which it'll then pierce and enter to supply the area. Anterior tympanic, a little bit more anteriorly, remember, is heading toward that petrotympanic fissure. Next, we see the meningeal branches. So here, only the middle meningeal artery. 
but sometimes you'll also see an accessory meningeal artery. And then finally, the inferior alveolar artery that will head into the mandible through the mandibular foramen. And the branch to the mylohyoid muscle will be given off before it and does not enter the mandibular foramen with it. As we move now on to the second part, we'll see that these are either superficial, or the whole second part is either superficial or deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle. Here it is superficial. And we'll remember these from our muscles of mastication. And most of the branches of the pterygoid or the second part are branches to these muscles. So what muscles do they supply? First, we see here a masseteric artery to the masseter. Then anterior and posterior deep temporal arteries that run deep to the temporalis muscle and supply them. Typically, we see that the posterior deep temporal artery gives off a pterygoid branch. We can also see pterygoid branches from the main maxillary artery as well, but these will supply the medial and lateral pterygoid muscles. Then we see this again, sort of the only one coming more inferiorly and down toward the area of the oral cavity, and that is the buccal artery. So that will supply the buccinator muscle, but also the area around that buccinator. So here we can see the cut masseteric branch as masseter has been removed. We see pterygoid branches here, as well as coming off of posterior deep temporal artery. You see the anterior deep temporal artery, and then it's quite far actually beyond the lateral pterygoid in this image, um, but that buccal artery comes off pretty distally toward the pterygomaxillary fissure, but it is still a branch of the second part of the maxillary artery. Now the third part here, I'm giving you just a preview. You're going to have a whole good amount of time with the pterygopalatine fossa and the branches within it of the artery and the maxillary nerve. Um, but I just wanted to complete the visual here so you have the named branches as they are. Um, these named branches are not meant to be learned immediately right now, but they're there if you'd like to look at them. We know that the third part then will enter into this pterygomaxillary fissure where it then gives off branches. All of these branches will traverse foramina, just like we saw in the first part. And through these branches, we'll see supply to the nasal cavity, superior oral cavity, the floor of the orbit, and the maxillary sinus. Again, more to come on this, just getting you ready to see it in the future. All right, so we have a question now. Um, which structure passes through the petrotympanic fissure with the anterior tympanic artery? Is it the accessory meningeal artery, the corda tympani, the lesser petrosal nerve, or the middle meningeal artery? So pause and choose your answer. So when you're ready, the correct answer here is B, the corda tympani. Now the corda tympani will exit the temporal bone through this petrotympanic fissure to then enter into the infratemporal fossa, whereas the anterior tympanic artery will branch off of the first part of maxillary artery in the infratemporal fossa and then enter into the middle ear or the part of the temporal bone through that petrotympanic fissure. So they kind of are heading in different directions but both coursing through that same space. So what foramina or foramen are we thinking about for accessory meningeal artery? That is foramen ovale. Now what about lesser petrosal nerve? Same thing, foramen ovale. Our last one here is middle meningeal artery. Where does that course through? And that will course through the foramen spinosum. Great, so hopefully this all makes sense to you. I hope that this has been helpful. Here are my sources. Thank you so much for your attention and I will talk to you in the next video.